In this example, we're going to look at an example of a series parallel network with uh, multiple impedance values connected in series and parallel to an AC source. So our picture here shows a voltage supply that is an AC source. And then I have multiple components in my circuit connected in series and parallel. So I have two resistors. I have an inductor and then I have a capacitor. And our goal is to determine the current through and the voltage across each of these components in the circuit. And we're gonna do this in a step-by-step -step method and we're gonna redraw our pictures along the way and then work backwards through our pictures um, to get to our final answer. So the very first thing we need to do is to try to identify things that are in series, uh, components that are in series and in parallel. And the first thing that I notice is that the resistor R2 and the inductor are in series with one another. And so I would like to combine those components together into some overall impedance value. So I have defined the overall impedance as Z2 in, um, in terms of the, the resistor and the inductor. So in order to find that total impedance of those two components connected in series, I have to write the components in terms of their impedance value. So the impedance of the resistor R2 is just the resistance value with an angle of zero. And the impedance for the inductor would be its reactance value, which is two kilo ohms, and it has an angle of 90 degrees, right? Because inductors are are going to um, be such that the voltage leads the current by 90. And I can write those in both polar form and rectangular form. I know that because they're connected in series that the total impedance adds together. So if I add these two values together, that's going to give me the impedance of everything that's in this um, yellow box right here, which I'm calling um, Z2. So one kilo ohm plus um, the inductor component of the impedance gives me um, the imaginary piece and of course I can write that total equivalent impedance in polar form. So I now know the total impedance um, in that yellow box. I can also write down what the impedance which I called Z1 is here that is strictly a resistive piece. So I can write down what the impedance is for that resistive piece. And it's just one kilo ohm with an angle of zero. And in the same regard, we've called um, the capacitive piece the Z3. And I can write down what the impedance for that particular component is. And that would be um, its reactance. And the angle is negative 90. And I'm writing them in both polar form and um, rectangular form. All right, so we've combined um, the two components in series and then we've redrawn sort of our picture with these boxes. So now I can take that picture that I had and I can replace it with a picture that um, just represents impedance values and inside those boxes could be capacitors, inductors, um, resistors, and so what I know is that inside the first box here of impedance, I have an impedance value of one kilo ohm angle of zero. Inside the second one, I combined that resistor and that inductor together, and it gave me a total impedance of 2.24 angle of 63.4. And there's that uh, resistive piece and that inductive piece. And then um, for my third piece here, it was strictly uh, a capacitor. And so we have what that impedance value is. As I look at this picture, I now want to, so, so what is my goal, right? So my goal is to find the current through and each component and the voltage across each component. And so we're going to analyze this circuit very similar to how we analyze resistors in series and parallel. So we're going to reduce our circuit down to just one equivalent impedance, and then um, we can find the total current. And then we can work backwards through those pictures and use what we know about series and parallel to figure out the current and the voltage across all those components. So as I look at this picture, what I realize is that the impedance Z2 and Z3 are in parallel with one another. So I can define a total equivalent impedance 
I'm going to call that z total 1 for those two components that are connected in parallel. And I'd like to take those two components and replace them with a box that has a total equivalent impedance, z total 1. So I need to add those um, in terms of being in parallel. So because I only have two components in parallel, I am going to add them using that special rule where I can multiply their impedance values and then divide by the addition of those two values. So Z2 has an impedance of 2.24, angle of 63.4. Z3 has an impedance value of 2 kilo ohms, angle of 90. So that's those components. And then I'm going to divide by the addition, so that's why it's important to have these in both rectangular form and polar form. So here's the rectangular form of Z2 and the rectangular form of Z3. If I multiply the two uh, impedance values at the top, 2.24 times 2, I get 4.48, I get kilo ohm squared. If I multiply them, that means I would add the angles. So 63.4 plus a negative 90 gives me a negative 26.6. And if I add the values at the bottom, um, conveniently, and this is just by chance, the imaginary pieces cancel out. Um, so uh, I only have a real part. And of course, if I only have a real part here, it's like having an angle of 0. It's very easy, so I would just take 4.48 divided by 1. I get 4.48 kilo ohms and an angle of negative 26.6. So Z2 and Z3 connected in parallel are equivalent to a, an impedance value, which is 4.48 with an angle of negative 26.6. So that means I can take the picture that I have here, and I can take those two components and I can replace them with this total equivalent impedance. And I have written down what that value is from the previous um, calculation. And then I still have my Z1 in my circuit, um, which is just one kilo. So now when I look at this picture, I realize that um, this is a pretty straightforward series um, connection. So my impedance Z1 and my impedance Z total 1 are connected in series. So I can add those two values together to give me some total equivalent impedance. And so I know what Z total 1 is. I know what Z1 is. So I can add those values together. Um, one thing I do need to do when I'm adding them together is add them in rectangular form. So I take my um, total equivalent impedance that I have in polar form and I can convert it into rectangular form and then I can add the values together. So I have 1 plus 4 kilo ohms minus an imaginary piece of uh, 2 kilo ohms. <clears throat> when I add those two values together in rectangular form, I can then convert them back into um, polar form. So in this circuit, my total equivalent impedance is 5.39 kilo ohms, and it has a, a phase shift angle of minus 21.8. So that means that the two impedance values that I had in my previous picture can be replaced by one total equivalent impedance that has a value of 5.39 kilo ohms, angle of minus 21.8 degrees. Now that I know my total equivalent impedance, I can figure out the total current that's coming out of that circuit and passing through that total equivalent impedance by using the equivalent of Ohm's law. So the total current is the total voltage over the total impedance. The total voltage is 50 volts with an angle of zero. The total impedance is 5.39 kilo ohms, angle of minus 21. 50 divided by 5.39 kilo ohms gives me 9.28 milliamps. 0 minus a minus 21.8 gives me 21.8. So I realize now that the current is leading the voltage by 21.8, right? So the voltage was 0. The current is 21.8, so the total current that's coming out of that voltage supply is leading the voltage by 21.8 degrees. That makes sense because if I look at my total impedance, the phase angle is negative 21.8. The negative sign just means the voltage lags. The total voltage from the circuit lags the total current by negative 21.8.
So now I can work backwards through my pictures. So I can go back to my picture where, um, so my total equivalent impedance is really equivalent to two impedance values connected in series. And so working backwards through my pictures, um, I know that um, impedance one was just a resistor. And I know that impedance, this total equivalent impedance, was a combination of two in parallel, but it has a value of 4.48 kilo ohms, angle of minus 26. And I now know the current that's coming out of this source is 9.28 milliamps with an angle of 21.8. So I can use the equivalent of Ohm's law for AC, and I can figure out the voltage across the impedance value Z1. Because this is in series, this total current passes through impedance one and the total um, and Z total one. So the voltage across um, this impedance value would be the current times the impedance. I have my current value multiplied by my impedance value, and I get a voltage of 9.28 volts with an angle of 21.8. I can do the same thing and I can calculate the voltage across my total equivalent um, impedance Z total one. The current comes around, passes through that impedance value, so it would be the current times that total equivalent impedance. There's my current, there's my total equivalent impedance for that particular piece, and so my voltage is 41.6 with an angle of minus 4.8. So now I basically know everything about this circuit, and so I would want to go back um, to my previous circuit. And so I recall that in my previous circuit, um, Z total one was equivalent to two impedance values that were connected in parallel. And so I've got now current coming out of the source. It's passing through Z1, it gets to this junction, and now that current is gonna split between these two impedance values. But because these are connected in parallel, I know that the voltage across those components, the voltage across two and the voltage across three, have to be equivalent to one another, and they have to be equal to the voltage that was across the total equivalent impedance. So V total one has to equal V two, which has to equal V three, because these are all connected in parallel. And I figured out from my previous slide previous part of this problem, that the voltage across that total equivalent impedance was 41.6 with an angle of minus 4.8. So if I know the voltage across each of these components, I can calculate what the current is. So the current through the section um, through the impedance Z2, this current here, would just be the voltage across that component over the impedance. I know the voltage and I know the total equivalent impedance C2 because we calculated that earlier. So the voltage over the impedance gives me 18.6, subtracting the angles, negative 6.8.2, negative 68.2. And I can also figure out the current through the other section um, for this impedance value by using the equivalent of Ohm's law. And so this is the voltage over the impedance same voltage, right? They're all connected in parallel, these two pieces. So the same voltage over the impedance value for this piece, which we found um, earlier, and I get a current of 20.8 milliamps with an angle of 85.2. So I've got 9.2 milliamps entering, and again, these numbers are larger than 9.2, but that's perfectly okay because they are not in phase with one another. They're actually shifted and they're sh shifted significantly so that when one is positive, the other one is, um, is going to be a negative value. All right, so now we're back to our original picture. And so what we know is we know the, um, the current that's going through the resistor R1, or the impedance 1, we found that. That's the current that's coming out of the supply, and we calculated the voltage. We also figured out the current through I3 and the voltage across that component. And then finally, we figured out the current that enters the junction where we have this total equivalent impedance Z2.
What we haven't done is we haven't found the voltage across the resistor R2 or the voltage across this um, inductor. But we know that they're connected in series. So the current that's um, passing through both of these has to be this current I2. So we can use the equivalent of Ohm's law and we can find the voltage across the resistor R2. It's just the current times the impedance of that resistor. The current is 18.6 milliamps that's entering times that resistance. So I get 18.6 volts, angle of minus 68.2. And then I can do the same thing for the inductor. The current that's passing through this inductor is also 18.6 times the impedance of this inductor, and we know the impedance of the inductor was 2 kilo ohms with an angle of 90, so I get 37.2 volts with an angle of 21.8. So I now have determined for this circuit what is the current through each of the components and what is the voltage across each of those components. So the thing to keep in mind with um, AC circuits that have capacitors, resistors, and inductors is that the process for finding the voltage and the currents through all those components is very, very similar to if you just had resistors in the circuit that were connected in series in parallel. In other words, you analyze the circuits in the same way in terms of identifying what's in series, what's in parallel, reduce the circuit down to one equivalent component, and then work backwards through your pictures. The big difference is, is that you're using impedance instead of resistance, and those impedance values are phasors, and we have to make sure that we're adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying in this phasor notation. But the process is the same as, as it was when we looked at resistors in series in parallel.